treatment, rehabilitation, and referral system. Number one, mental health workplace policies and programs shall include capacity for treatment or referral procedures for treatment modalities and rehabilitation to be provided by the employer through the company's workers assistance program or any other program that will provide access to mental health services. Um, okay, this might uh, be difficult for some employers. For the bigger employers who have the resources, probably they can um, comply with this. Unfortunately, smaller businesses might not ha have the means to uh, comply with um, uh, this. Of course, we have to note that uh, this is this is an either or. So uh, the mental health work policies and programs shall include capa uh, include capacity for treatment. Again, if you can just imagine uh, big businesses versus small businesses, big businesses probably would be able to comply with this by engaging, hiring, or uh, um, uh, getting consultants, mental health professionals who might be able to help assist or aid their employees who might not be experiencing uh, uh, or who might be experiencing some mental health condition, then all well and good. But that is not always going to be the case with respect to small businesses. That's why the operative, uh, how to say this, um, word here is the or referral procedures. So at the very least, even for small businesses, they should be able to comply with this, meaning uh, small businesses should have a ready um, list uh, where they can refer their employees or workers for treatment with respect to mental health. So a good uh, resource would be the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, okay, or other government uh, facilities or even in... in for private uh, sector or private facilities that might be providing this service, then that could also be a good referral uh, center. Okay, so again, um, if the company is able to do so, then there should be capacity for treatment. If not, or either or, at, least, at the very least, there should be a referral uh, procedure. Number two, workers with mental health conditions shall be referred to a DOH licensed uh, or accredited or recognized mental health facility or mental health service providers for appropriate management. Um, I think there's already a list posted on the website of the Department of Health with respect to those who are accredited by them. So DOH accredited mental health facility or mental health service provider providers. This is similar to 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 DOH accredited um, clinics for purposes of drug testing. So the the DOH accredited facilities in this case right now that we're discussing these are uh, service providers uh, in relation to mental health. Number three. The absence of workers undergoing treatment and rehabilitation shall be charged against their leave credits or they may utilize other regulated leaves like victims of violence against women and their children or policy leave, if applicable, without prejudice to the existing company policies on the availment of leave. Okay, we need to dissect this because this can cause issues or problems. So it says here, the absence of workers undergoing treatment or rehabilitation shall be charged against their leave credits. Okay, now uh, the general rule is that it's only the employee or the workers who get to decide how to use their leave credits. Okay, that's a general rule because some workers or employees might not want to use their leave credits because they are saving them for some important reasons, such as having a long 
Christmas uh, vacation. Or sometimes they are intentionally not using their leave credits so that they can be converted to cash uh, later on because unused leave credits, particularly the service incentive leave, um, they are convertible to cash. Okay. So if the employee does not want to use their leave credits, then it's their choice or prerogative. That's the general rule. Now, this dollar regulation is saying that if the employer or worker undergoes treatment and rehabilitation, then though the days of their uh, their the days that they are absent, that will be charged against their leave credits. So it presupposes, contemplates, or thinks of a situation where the employee does not actually give consent or does not really apply for uh, use of leave credits, but rather it is automatically applied. Okay, and then the subsequent clause does not really help, okay, because um, uh, it says here they may utilize. So in this case, um, it's possible that the employee uh, gives consent already, then we have no problem if that happens, but it, it introduces only the the policy leave and other possible leaves that the that is company initiated or company provided. But it doesn't really answer again that important question that can the company or the employer uh, use or apply leave credits for absences even without the consent of uh, application slash approval of the employee. Uh, that should be that should have been uh, contemplated in this policy and then properly addressed. But that is the current wording. Number four: If a worker with mental health condition has exhausted his or her leave credits, then the medical leave incurred shall be without pay. So it just it's just a logical consequence. Remember that leave credits when they are used or applied, that that is the same with um, as if they are present or they, meaning they are paid even if they're absent. But if you don't have a leave credit to use and you're absent, then obviously the general principle of no work, no pay will apply. You won't be paid for the day of absence if you don't use a leave credit. Five, in the absence of the legally required uh, OH personnel, the safety officer or HR personnel shall facilitate referral of a worker who is at risk or with mental health condition or medical evaluation and or intervention. So there, um, the legally required special health personnel uh, that is under the discussions or under the um, rules on occupational safety and health the OH personnel will vary depending on the size of establishments, but generally you have your committee, then you have your um, safety personnel, and so on and so forth. Um, in some cases, if the organization falls under that category where, where I think it's more than 50 plus, I'm not sure right now, but it's when you will be needed to have your own nurse. And in some cases, if the establishment is bigger than in some uh, that calls for uh, having your own physician or doctor. But that discussion should be for a separate uh, presentation or video. For now, our focus is on, on mental health.